in the layer basics video, um, I started with the first couple of exercises from chapter nine of Digital Foundations, and I uh, completed, at the end of that video, I completed this um, collage of two hands with this adjustment layer to make the scene blue. Uh, I still had this hand file open. I'm gonna actually close that file, uh, but I will leave, and I'm not gonna save it, I will leave my, um, my two hands open. And now I want to collage uh, more body parts on top of this. So this is sort of the exquisite corpse, um, very traditional Dada exercise of making um, sort of an estranged, uh, estranged body out of a variety of body parts. So I'll use Command O for File Open, and inside my Chapter 9 um, files, I will go ahead and Shift click all of those files, everything but the hand and the exercise file that I have open, and I'll click open. And by default in Photoshop, I will see these files open in all of these different um, tabs. And since I want to kind of piece by piece put these different images onto this background, I'm gonna go ahead and choose Window Arrange Tile. Window arrange tile. This is a, just a little bit different way of looking at different files in Photoshop. And when I choose window arrange tile, um, I now am going to see all of my images tiled in my space. Um, these are all separate documents, and I could click from one to the other. I know it can be a little overwhelming to sort of see all of these documents at once, but it's kind of nice when you're just um, planning to put a bunch of images together to see everything all at one time. So. You could, there's lots of ways that you could go about um, taking each of these images and putting them onto the final uh, compositional space. Um, you could just select the image itself, and so in this case back.psv, and you could take the whole layer, which is called background, and actually I'm going to rename it right now just to save myself some trouble. So I'll double click right on background, and I'll call this back. So I could take that whole back layer and drag and drop it right on top of my Exercise 2 file. And then I could close that back document. I don't need to save it. I could um, alternatively take, for instance, my ear, and I could choose Select All to select everything in the document. I could choose Edit Copy and then go to my Exercise 2 file. I'm going to just make this file a little bit bigger. And in here, Edit Paste, and that will paste my ear document. Now that will paste my ear as layer 1, so I have to remember to rename my layer as I'm, as I'm going. I'm going to move the back down the page a little bit. I could go to one of my, I'm gonna, I could go ahead and delete my ear, uh, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to make this image bigger, and you can see as I click and drag on that, on that um, bottom right corner, I can make one tile larger and another smaller. I could take just a portion of my image. So you can use your marquee tools, your rectangular marquee, if you click and hold your mouse, you'll see you have an a rectangular marquee. And underneath that, I know it's, it's kind of being hidden there, my elliptical marquee tool, or a single roll or single column. Um, you could also use the uh, lasso tool. The lasso tool, I have to admit, it's not my favorite tool, but uh, it is a way, especially if you're new to working in Photoshop, it is a way to just make a quick kind of sketch around uh, part of an image, and that will give me a selection. So just a quick freeform selection around some part of an image. Um, and so I could select just the arm uh, with some obvious uh, background that's happening there and edit copy that. Notice if I go into my exercise two file and edit paste, I'm gonna get just the part that I copied. And again, I will go ahead and give this a name, left arm. I could copy that again if I wanted to and paste it again, or 
in this file with my move tool selected and left arm active I could hold the option key and just click and drag and that will give me left arm copy so if I could double click right on the words there and call that right arm because I'm about to make it a right arm um, one thing to watch out for I, I often see people double clicking out here like not on the name and that will give you this layer style box you can cancel if that happens to you by accident you can cancel it just make sure if you're renaming you want to click right on the words um, whatever the name is for the layer With that right arm I'm going to choose um, edit and from the transform menu I'll choose flip horizontal and so now I have a right arm and I can close that arm window I'll again uh, choose, this time I'm going to choose my elliptical marquee. So from where my rectangular marquee is stored in the toolbox, I will click and hold my mouse right on top of that. And I'll scroll to the second tool, the elliptical marquee. And with the elliptical marquee, I can click and drag a kind of oval selection around, uh, around the head here. Uh, just a little word on this tool. You can also, if you want to, hold the option key so that when you click and drag, you'll click out from the center. So if you have an idea of where the center of the space is, some people like to work with the tool like this. If you don't use the option key, you can click and drag. And while you're dragging the mouse, if you hold the space bar, you can reposition where you where it seems as though you've started. I'm going to do that one more time because it's a little hard for people to get that one. But I'm just clicking and dragging, and then right now I'm still pressing my mouse. I'm going to add the spacebar key to move my selection, release the spacebar key, continue to drag with my mouse, and then I'll let go of my uh, I'll let go of my mouse. So maybe I'll take a selection like this and edit copy or Command C, go back over to that exercise two document and edit paste. Uh, again, remember to rename this. close that document now. I might pick up the feet. You can do this however you like. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the rectangular marquee tool and take a quick selection just around the feet. Um, I can also use the move tool right on top of my selection and I can move um, right into this document. So just a lot of different ways where you can, uh, for you to move some images uh, into a combined sort of collage space. And now I'll make this a little bit smaller so that I can see, maybe take all of the torso here, and then we can decide what we wanna, how much we wanna use of it. And again, just copy, close that document, and Command V like vector to paste. Now I've forgotten to name some of my layers, so I'll go ahead and name this torso and hide it so I can see what's beneath it. These are my shoes. Okay, and I did an okay job of naming everything else. Now I might take that top torso layer and click and drag the stacking order all the way back here. So I might move that all the way back to the very, uh, the very back of, of, my, um, of my collage. And with the move tool, I might move it down just a little bit. I also might, I know I can't see everything else. I'm going to just click and drag over all those eyeballs. I also might choose edit free transform uh, or command T. And if I put my cursor just outside one of those corners, I can click and drag to rotate. So I'm just going to kind of play with this. There's no real rule. I mean, you can follow the book, but you can just point of these exercises is just to play um, and to uh, for you to learn how to use the tools so that when you do your own work uh, you have a good grasp over the different tools. So I'm just moving some of these pieces around. I'm going to move the right arm way over here maybe. Okay. Remember, in the last 
screencast, I had mentioned how adjustment layers will only work uh, and they will only sort of affect the layers beneath them. So if I dragged my fee saturation adjustment layer all the way to the top, everything would be blue. If I left it where it was, everything behind these body pieces are blue. Um, that means if I would go to a layer, so I'm on the torso layer right now, and if I would change my blending mode, it would be blended with blue. Notice with the darkened mode, I've kind of lost all of those light areas, and so it kind of almost seems like my, uh, what, what was there, sort of what felt as, as background negative space to the torso, um, sort of disappears into the, into the uh, blue composition behind it. So you might play with some of the different blending modes as you work on your uh, exquisite corpse. Um, and you also might check out making another adjustment layer. So I'm just kind of going through them to show uh, the differences there. I might make an adjustment layer way at the top here. So once again, I'll click my fee saturation adjustment. I'll press colorize to give it a monotone. I'll increase the saturation a little bit and I'll go maybe a little bit more uh, towards that red orange. Okay, now everything has gone orange. I'll put this away for now. What I could do is shift click to grab all of these layers between the top fee saturation and the one that goes blue, and from my Pull, uh, my layer panel pull down menu, that's a tongue twister, I could choose new group from layers. And I'm going to call this group you know, bodies. Okay. And now I have my two hands, my blue adjustment layer, all of the bodies, and my hue saturation for orange. Now, if I clip my hue saturation just to bodies, it will only affect the layers that are in this layer group. And I did that, I'm gonna kind of undo it and do it again just to show it. I did that by putting my cursor right on the line between hue saturation and bodies, I'm holding my option key on a Mac, on a PC it would be the alt key. Notice you get this little icon, this sort of down arrow icon, and when I press the mouse, that clips this adjustment layer to these layers, um, specifically to whatever's underneath it. But since whatever's underneath it right now is a group of layers, all of those layers are going to be affected by this adjustment layer. And if I turn the adjustment layer off and on, you can see that it's affecting all of those layers. So just another way to be organized in the layer panel, uh, groups from layers. I'm going to do that one more time just to show it. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and choose my adjustment layer with my two hands and so I just clicked one time here and hold the shift key and click one time there and then again from my layer panel pull down menu I will choose um, new group from layers and I'll call this hands and so it just keeps my layer panel organized so I've got the hands in the background in there I've got all the bodies there I've got the adjustment layer up there that's being clipped to that bodies layer. There's a lot of other options. You might take a look in there just to see what else you can do. You can make, you can just make a new group, a blanket sort of new folder, and you can add layers to that group just by dragging them in. You can lock layers in a group. Um, we haven't talked yet about smart objects, but that's something we can talk about later. Uh, we can merge groups and we can flatten and merge uh, your, your layers. Uh, I would avoid merging and flattening until you're really, really sure of what you're, of what you're doing. Flattening your, your image will basically squash all of your layers onto one uh, background layer. Uh, so that would disable any editing options that you might want to, to keep around. Um, so there's a lot of choices in your, in your layer panel, in your layer panel pull-down menu, um, and hopefully now you have a pretty good handle over moving images around, changing the stacking order, changing the blending mode, um, and working with the free transform tool.